strangers, you've seen me before, I've hugged you, talked to you, pushed you over, danced with you, come on, you know me. I'm no one new, I'm just me, and I love you all. It's good to see you again. I just want to thank Pastor Patty and Pastor Alex for inviting me again. It must mean that I'm doing something good for them to have me back. I honor them so, I love them dearly. God is doing something great here. I want you to know you're going to need more seats in this house very soon. The transformation is happening. The furniture is moving. And you're going to need to be ready because there are good things happening. There's some changes happening even in individuals here. The Lord is promoting many individuals in, in your house. You know, the writers, the teachers, the marketplace ministers, God is promoting you. There's a... Uh, more on the table. You know, the Lord sets a table before us in the presence of our enemies, and he anoints our head with oil right in their presence. They can do nothing about it. They could say all they want, but they can't change a thing. When God puts his hand on a person's life, what can man do to stop it? When God says it's time for your promotion, what can a man do to stop that? I was sitting in my seat and the Lord said, I want you to pray for the children. So I wondered if the children, all of these little ch children here at the back, if you could line up here for a minute. I just, oh good, come on up guys. All of the youth, come on up. Don't be shy, I'm just gonna pray for you. I'm being obedient to the Lord, come on up. Oh, I want them too. Can someone get the kids for a minute? This is uh, something that the Lord wants done this morning. Can you guys line up across the front here, please? You are the youth, the next generation, the doctors, the teachers, the lawyers, the politicians, yeah? The singers, the songwriters. The Lord has a plan for you. And I want you to know, he wants, he has such a good plan for your life that the enemy is going to try to stop you. He's going to try to stop you. But the Lord says no. He will not allow the enemy to take from you what he's already deposited in your life. He wants you to know there will be many choices, many things on the table for you to choose from in the near future. But the Lord has a plan for you that is bigger than what you know, bigger than what you see, even bigger than what your parents are encouraging in, in to do. There's more. I want you all to say with me on three, there's more. One, two, three, there's more. Again, there's more. There's more than this. There is more than this. We have not reached the edge of where God is. There is more. There is always more. So let's get these little ones over here. This is a good morning to bless them right before summer camp. Woo, see, he's excited. He's ready to go. That's a Caleb spirit right there. All right. There was a king in the old days. And this king, he wasn't really liked by his subject because they thought he was a hard king. That means that he was tough. He was strict. And a lot of people don't like to be under that level of authority when somebody's tough and strict. But this king had a plan. You see, he was going to leave where he was just for a short period of time. And he said to the people, under his command. This story is in Luke, Luke 19. A certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. So the king was going to leave his kingdom, but he planned on returning. The story is for you guys. He had a plan. And what did he do before he left? He said to those who are in his command, and he called his 10 servants and delivered them. He gave each one 10 pounds. So the king gives you something, and you, 
And you, I want you to hold out your hand. And you, the king is going to give you something. Hold out your hand. The king's giving you something this morning. The king is giving you something this morning. Receive it. Hold out your hand. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it, little one. A little Caleb, Joshua spirit going on here. Receive it. The king is giving you something grand, a great gift. And he's going to leave for the short period of time. But what is his plan? He plans to return. But the gift that he gives you has an assignment on it. There's an assignment for you to do with what he has given you. Hold out your hand. Hold out your hand. The Holy Spirit is moving upon you guys this morning. He wants you to know he's blessing you for your future. Your very near future. All right. He said unto them these words, and I want you guys to repeat it when I say to you to repeat it. He said, occupy until I come. On three, we're going to say, occupy until I come. And you're going to say it loud. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Occupy until I come. So you have something in your hand, and you're going to use that gift to occupy. And what that means is, whatever the Lord has told you to do with that gift in your hand, you are to use it. You are to increase it, which means makes more, make more. So when your parents gives you your allowance there, Mr. Caleb anointing, you're going to say, Dad, how can I make this increase? That means how can I make more out of my $5? How can I make more out of my loony? How can I make more out of the education that the Lord's giving me? How can I make more out of the instruments that he's placed in my hand? How can I make more? It's your assignment. The king has given you an assignment. The king says, occupy until I come. On three, one, two, three. Occupy until I come. Again. Occupy until I come. Which means stay in your place. Do what you said you would do. Stand strong. No matter what the wind is, no matter how high the sea rages, no matter what men say to you, what did the king say to you to do? Occupy until I come. Again. Occupy until I come the next generation in this house. You are taking that baton to the next level. Many of you know how to run a race. You've run a race in school. You've seen people run races and they pass on the baton. Well, you're the ones who are going to receive that baton. How are you going to spend your money? So the Lord gives you these talents and these gifts to use because he has a plan for your life. If you know what the Lord has told you to do with your life, tell me. Who's going to be a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer? Who's going to be a preacher, a songwriter? Who has got those anointings? I'm going to hold the mic. You guys tell me, what is it that is in your heart? Caleb, what do you want to do when you grow up? Do you know yet? Do you know what you're going to do yet? Um, yes. Teacher, educator? I'm not sure yet. Not sure? Not sure. Uh -huh. Not sure. Uh -huh. Not sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> not sure yet. Uh -huh. Not sure. Yes? Doctor. A doctor. Say it loud. Doctor. Uh -huh. Ah, not sure. 
This is the answer that I was expecting, but I'm not sure yet. But I'm not sure yet, Lord. What should I do with the gifts and the talent that you've given me? I'm not sure. But let me give you a plan. Hallelujah. It's one of those mornings that you weren't expecting when you got out of bed and your mom told you to get in the car and you said no. You didn't know this was going to happen, did you? You didn't know the Lord was going to put his hand on you this morning. Can somebody put that script? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. So he called his ten servants, delivered to them ten minus, which is a coin or a talent or a gift. And he said to them, do business till I come. Next verse, Marlon. Hallelujah. But his citizens hated him and sent delegation after him saying, we will not have this man reign over us. They didn't like their king. They didn't want him to be king. But when the king gives a command, he's still the king. Whether or not we like him, whether or not we think he's a good king or a hard king, he's still the king. Go on. And so it was that when he returned, did I tell you the king was going to return? And at that point, you better know what you're going to do with that gift. By that point, you've got to know, am I going to be a doctor? Am I going to be a writer? Okay? So it was that when he returned, having received the kingdom he went for, he then commanded these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him. So the king is calling you in now. He's gone, he's done business abroad, and now he's home. So he called them in and he said that he might know how much every man has gained by trading, by trading, by maybe going to school, by working with your parents, working with your hands, working with your feet, whatever it is, the Lord is imparting that to you this morning. He's given you something. It's in your hand. You're the next generation coming up over the hill. The Lord has a plan for each and every one of your life. If you hold on to what he promises you, you will fulfill your plan because he's intentional in seeing you do it. He's intentional in making sure that your plan, your assignment, your gift is going to and be enlarged. That means it's going to be bigger than you think, and it's going to bless the people of your generation. You are called to serve your generation. However you decide to do it, However you decide, whether you're going to get to earn your degree, whether you're going to be a manager, whether you're going to be a soccer player, basketball, those assignments. See, that makes sense to you, didn't you? I saw that spirit jump there. If you're going to be an athlete, he wants you to, what's, what did the Lord say? Occupy until I come. Come on, say it loud. Occupy until I come. So whatever it is you're deciding to do, you are to occupy until I come. So what if his coming is 30 years? What if his coming is only 30 days? What will you be doing when he returns? The king is going to return and he's going to say to you, what did you do with the gifts I gave you? What did you do with it? What did you do with it? Did you become an athlete? Did you become a doctor? What did you do? Because everything that is in your heart today, the Lord is the one who put that there. And he is equipping you. When we say he's equipping you, it means that he's going to give you the gifts, the talents, and he's going to anoint you to complete it. He's going to anoint you to complete it. So if you're in doubt 
of what it is he's called you to do, that's okay right now. But at some point, you're going to know. And at that point, you are to press in, which is what we mean when we say you've got to hold your ground. There will be many choices. There will be many people telling you what to do and how to do it. But the king is going to return. And he is going to ask you, what did you do with all that I shared with you? This is a time to think and to refresh and to think about all those things that he has promised you so far. There's always more. There's always more. I want you to know that everything that the Lord has promised you is bigger than you are. It's going to require other people to help you. It's going to require you to ask for help. But it's bigger than who you are. It's greater than what you think it is. But the Lord wants you to hold on to him he is the king. He is the one with all the ideas and all the plans of how to get there. And if you stay with him, if you pray with him, if you hold on to him, he will see that you get there. I want you to say on three, I will get there. One, two, three. I will get there. As the command of the king is to occupy till I come. Say it again. Occupy till I come. Occupy till I come. Now you know. An assignment is upon your life. Whatever that assignment is, you are to do it until he comes. Because he is going to return and ask you, what did you do with all that I gave to you? I want you to lift up your hand if you understand what I'm telling you this morning when the Lord says to occupy until I come because I want to pray for you. So hold up your hands. Caleb anointing. Hold that up for me. Higher. 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 Maybe somebody could stand beside them for a little bit. Father God, I thank you. I thank you for these who are the next generation the next generation of teachers, preachers, doctors, lawyers, educators, politicians, whatever you've called them to do, O oh Lord. I pray, God, that they will know, that they know, that they know that you are with them. Nothing will push them away. Nothing will take them away from your glory. I thank you, Lord, that you have a plan. You have a destiny for them. And you're intentional in seeing that their destiny comes to pass. Yes, he does. You will see to, you, to it that their destiny will come to pass. So I thank you, Lord, that your will will be done over these young ones. Over these ones that you're taking to the next step and to the next level. And I thank you, Lord, that they will hold on to you through any storm, through any challenges, Father. And that they will have an understanding of what it is to occupy until you come. I pray your blessing over them from the youngest to the oldest, the tallest to the shortest, all of them. Bless them mightily. Help them occupy until you come. Say, thank you, Lord. On three, say, I will occupy until you come. One, two, three. I will occupy until you come. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a hand, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I need to wipe my face. Sorry about that. Whew. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. The Lord was saying to me, bring the children unto me and forbid them not. Forbid them not. These are our next generation. These are our kings and our priests that the Lord is calling. 
But the Lord also has a call for us who are the ones who have gone before them. Do you know how important it is that we have gone before them? And our place, our place is to mentor and father them. Our place is never to push them aside. Our place is never tell them, you're just kids, stay away. Our place is to bring them in, show them, teach them. We're going to be in a, in a season of summer camp where the Lord is going to bless them, anoint them, pour his spirit over them. And we need to be there for they are our next generation. They are the ones the Lord is going to send out two by two or 12 by 12. Occupy until he comes. So they have their assignment, but so do we. Occupy until he comes. This morning I heard part of Pastor Patty talking about the fire. The fire that she was praying over the city of Hamilton, the fire she was praying over the streets of Hamilton, we were doing that in intercession just yesterday. We we're praying for that fire because the Lord is releasing a greater glory upon his people. And this may be your season to catch that fire to catch that fire, to be like Peter who's saying it's like fire shut up in my bones. This is your season of preparation. This is your season of being enlightened and enlarged in the spirit. I want you to press in in this season because the Lord wants us to occupy until he comes. We are their future. We're the ones that's going to hold their hands and walk with them and talk with them. So we need to prepare. As the Lord is bringing all these great speakers here, we need to prepare for the next step. The city of Hamilton needs us. Do you know what amazing thing I heard from an intercessor in the city of Hamilton? This city, that during COVID, 25 churches were birthed in Hamilton. 25 new churches are here in this city now. So the enemy didn't squish us. He didn't push us down. He didn't defeat us. We received the challenge and we rose to that challenge. 25 new churches are birthed in the city during all of the COVID and all of the mandates. I want you to know the city of Hamilton is going to receive that revival fire that is burning now. This fire is burning now. The intercessors saw it. The intercessors prayed it through. And as Pastor Patty confirmed that this morning, I want you to know you're in for something good. I'm encouraging you, be here for these camp meetings. Receive what the Lord has for you because he's calling us to occupy where we are. It doesn't matter if we're a priest who is in the church and working in the church or if you're a king who's in the marketplace. The Lord is saying, occupy where you are. I'm encouraging you, whatever the Lord has for you in this season, hold on to that. Whatever he's presented to, the, to you, whatever you've dreamed about, had visions about, hold on to that. Occupy until he comes. Maybe we as adults need to say that declaration this morning on three. Occupy until he comes. One, two, three. Occupy until he comes. It's not over for us. This is our beginning. This is our beginning. The transformation is, uh, center is still being birthed. Do you realize you're not there yet? You're in the birthing stage. You're still in the canal being birthed. Imagine what you will be like in five years when people will be lined up outside because you see there's gross darkness in the earth and people are looking for the light. And everyone that comes here is being prepared to do what? I want you to say it until you believe it. You hold your ground 
until he comes. The enemy is going to try to push you off with every sin. He's going to set traps for you. He's going to try to move you out of your place. But you're going to do what? You're going to fulfill your assignment. You're going to hold on to what the Lord is giving you in this hour. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the prophetic word, even as you are going to receive them. Because many of the speakers are going to prophesy to you. Make sure you bring your phones to these meetings. Because we want accountability when you receive your prophetic word. We don't want people saying things that we did not say. And God even says that in the word. People have said things that he did not say. So when you come and you're receiving your prophetic words, you've got it recorded. One of the things that's good to do is write it out. There's some really good apps on your computer and laptop that will uh, you know, just write things out for you as you speak it into, the, into your computer. And when you write it out, I want you to know that a personal prophecy is not the same as a corporate prophecy. Because each individual receives a personal prophecy. And we're all wondering, why is it taking so long? Why are all the years piling up and I haven't seen these prophetic words come to pass? Well, when you receive a personal prophecy, that prophecy comes That prophecy, try to use the right word. Those personal prophecies are not concrete, yes. They're not carved in stone that they're going to happen. You see, the Lord gives us personal prophecies, and I have lots of them, all kinds of them. But if you want those prophecies to come to pass, you've got to stay with him. And you've got to align your life to see the fulfillment of that word. Personal prophecies come with conditions. You're going to receive a lot more. I've received a lot from summer camp. But one of the things we don't understand is that there are conditions with these prophetic words that we receive. They are conditional. Did we own up to our end when the Lord said he's taking us to Cuba and Africa and China? Those are the prophecies people love, but they don't see the work that's going to come with that. Because you're going to bring a friend. They're going to bring a friend. Oh, you've got to get a prophecy from this guy. You've got to get a prophecy from that guy. But prophetic words are conditional. And unless we abide in the vine so that the Lord can prune us, so that he can tweak some things in our lives, so that he can brush off some old ways of thinking, so he can renew our mind with the word, those prophecies sit there. Because you see, God has all kinds of time, but we don't. And some of the prophetic words that we're still waiting on, they had conditions attached to them. Those are what happens when we receive personal prophecies. And we're waiting three months, where's that money? Three months, where's the husband? Three months, where's the ministry? And that's it. I gave God three months. We're done. I'm out of here. Some people have done that. Three months, I'm done. Because we don't understand when, the, when we receive a prophetic word, not only are we to pray over them, write them out, and follow the Lord, we're not going to see them happen. Because the Lord waits on us to get our thinking right, to get in line with the people in authority that he has over us. So I want you to be encouraged about receiving your prophetic word, but also know that you now have a warning about your prophetic words. They are conditional. 
God is waiting for you to line up your life before you see them happen. And many people who give God the time frame see those prophecies just fade away. They're not dead, they're not buried, they're not gone. But God is waiting for us to line up. When we receive a corporate prophecy, so that would be a prophetic word that Pastor Patty receives on behalf of the whole ministry because she's the vice president. Those prophecies, 100%, they're gonna come to pass. 100%. Because the Lord is now speaking to his people, not just to one person, his people, his body of Christ, the body of Christ, when God speaks over the body of Christ, it's going to come to pass. You're seeing the prophecies that Daniel received coming to pass now. His word is true. The prophecies over a nation, his word is true. They will come to pass. You don't know when or where, but they will come to pass. And it may be for generations down the road. But I'm giving you a warning and an encouragement for your personal prophecies. Don't expect them to happen overnight. God is going to walk with you through the process. We're given a word, and then we're put into the process. We don't know how long it's going to take. But we must be ready. Prepare yourself to walk through the process after you've received your prophetic words. I've seen lots of them come to pass. Some of them I'm still waiting on, but I know the Lord is working on me to prepare for that prophecy. If the Lord gives you a prophetic word that you're going to receive a promotion, you're an individual. He says you're going to receive a promotion. All right? He intends to do it. But if you're living your life in a way that when God gives you that promotion, you're going to fall, you're not ready. If God tells you he's going to give you the pulpit or he's going to make you a CEO, and you know, if I become a CEO, I'm not going to make it. It's because you're not ready. The Lord often gives us personal words when we're not ready for the fulfillment. You're not ready for the fulfillment, but he's telling you your future if you come in line. So you've got some prophetic words now on the shelf. You've got some words that you haven't seen yet. Maybe it's been years. I don't want you to be discouraged and think God has forgotten you. God doesn't forget what he speaks over us. He's intentional about seeing it come to pass. So I'm encouraging you this morning. If you received a word in 1998, I want you to go back and read it again. Listen to it again. You know the thing about receiving prophetic words in 1998, Pastor Patty? It's because they were on cassette tapes. I've got about 40 of those on cassette tapes. Do you know how hard it is for me to find some kind of device that will play a cassette tape in 2022? So sometimes I want to go back and read again the word that the Lord had given me or hear again. And you know what? When you go back and listen to your word again, it's not what you thought. How many have found that? It's not what you thought. You're receiving that word. In, in your heart, you're thinking, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to do this. God's saying this. God's saying that. I'm going to write books. I'm going to do this. That's what you're hearing. But you're not really listening to what the Spirit is saying. So it's always good to go back, listen to it again. Listen to it again. And that's why it's good to write it out because sometimes we miss things. Sometimes we miss the part that says, I'm going to take you through some years of cleaning, pruning, <laughs> cleaning up so that you will be nicer to people. <laughs> so that you would be kinder to your brothers and sisters. We miss those parts. 
We just want the part that says, I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. But the Holy Spirit's also telling us about our character. It's in your prophetic word, people of God. I've gone back and read mine. <laughs> the Holy Spirit deals with our character when we receive these words. So when you're going to be receiving them over the next five weeks, I want you to think clearly now. God has a plan for my life. But there's a condition on this. Am I going to walk the line? Am I going to bring myself into alignment with what God asked me to do? Or am, am I going to do my own thing? And then expect him to come clean it up whenever I ask him to. Because he won't. I just felt I needed to tell you that this morning. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. The Lord is going to be speaking to us. I've got my phone ready. I'm ready to hear it. But I'm ready to hear it with a different heart than how I was 10 years ago or five years ago. Because now I know the Holy Spirit's going to speak about my character, not just about what he wants me to do in the kingdom. Do you hear of people of God? Are we good? All right, let's stand. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. It's a new season. I was listening to a prophetic word that I'd received not long ago. I was listening to it this morning before I came. And I thought, wow, didn't hear that part. Didn't hear that part. Because that's not what I wanted to hear. I encourage you, listening to them again. The Lord is speaking to us about our heart, about what he wants to do in us, how he wants to clean us up and prepare us for our destiny. It's about destiny. Father God, I just thank you for this morning. Thank you for Pastor Alex and Pastor Patty, who has trusted me to stand in this pulpit and speak again. I ask you to honor them and bless them. Multiply and increase. I thank you, Lord, for the leaders that you're calling to hold their hands up in the spirit. I thank you for those, Father, who are loyal, who are pillars in the house, those who will stand and pray. Stand and declare, stand and be in the meeting, stand and walk with them and work in unity without grumbling. I pray God for this season, that Father God, it will be a season of unity, unity, unity in the house. I declare it over each and every one that will be at these meetings, all the volunteers, all the leaders, all of those who worship in prayer, those who will be at the back in the sound booth, those who are looking after the technical things. I pray, God, that we will work in unity and we will have a greater understanding of when we are being prayed for, or being prayed over, or being imparted, uh, you know, receiving impartation, that, God, we will do it in a mature way. For you have taken us through hardship in the last two years. And we thank you, Lord, that we've come out on the other side, ready to serve, ready to do your will, ready to say yes, Lord. I thank you for this congregation and for those who couldn't come today. I ask you to bless them mightily. Open up their hearts to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour in the season of preparation, in the season of molding, changing, as Pastor Patty said in the word, change is going to happen. When the Holy Spirit moves, change is going to happen. We cannot deny that. You cannot uh, walk away from it. Change is going to happen. If revival hits in this house uh, in the next week, change is going to come. And you're preparing us, God for that change, that we would walk in maturity, that we would walk in unity, that we'll work together to get the job done. 
We just ask you, Father, pour your spirit over all of these men and women. Pour your spirit upon them and part into them that anointing of the servant, Father, so that they will give and give and give and see the wonder of giving and know how much you are loved, Father. Bless them mightily this day. And we just thank you, God, for those in leadership here who are holding the line, who are holding their ground in the spirit. We thank you for the youth, and we ask you to bless them. We thank you for the children. We're asking you to bless them. We just thank you, Lord, for this day. It is a day that you have made. And yes, we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll pass this to Pastor Patty. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is so good, isn't he? Somebody's calling. I hope it's the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, this is such a strategic season. Do you believe it? It's a strategic season, and I hope you're positioning yourself. Because not only are we going to pour out this week, we are going to receive. Amen? And uh, I want you to know that it's also strategic because John Arnott will be with us next Sunday, and the following Sunday, uh, Jonathan Edwards will be here. So we, are, we, we have, wow, two power-packed Sundays to come. And that word was an excellent preparation. Do you feel like the Lord's kind of working on your heart? Like there's a plowing that he's doing? And so that was a really, really excellent preparation for us. So let's just uh, close in prayer this morning. And uh, let's just thank Anne-Marie for that amazing message. Can you give her a great big hand? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, Father, right now, we just position ourselves in heart to receive from you. If there's something on your heart right now that's been burdening you or weighing you down, just lift that up to the Lord right now. Maybe it's something to do with your business. Maybe it's something to do with a person. Maybe it's, it's something that just lift it up to him. Just lift it up to him. I just hear the Lord saying, I am big enough. I am big enough. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just thank you that we are positioning ourselves to receive. Lord, wash us and cleanse us this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to have someone place an offering basket up here. And if you'd like to bless Anne Marie this morning, you are welcome to do that. Um, we're we're going to sow into her lives as a, as a church into her life, but I, I just want to give you the opportunity to do that if you'd like to do that. But right now, what I want you to do is, is just receive. I'm going to bless you. You can come and get prayer if you would like. But I, I just want you to position yourself this week to receive because God is going to do something amazing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just thank you for this family. Lord, I bless them. Lord, I thank you for the gift, for the, the gift that is in their hands that you have put. And Lord, I thank you for the lives that they're going to touch. I thank you for the servants that they are. I thank you that this week, Lord, we're, and, and then over the next couple of weeks, Lord, we're going to host. 
we're going to host your presence, your glory, and we're going to host the saints that you send us. And I just thank you for each one of them, Lord, that you position them for such a time as this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Turn around to somebody else and say, God has positioned you for such a time as this. Hallelujah. God is so good. God has positioned you for such a time as this. Sariska, God has positioned you for such a time as this. Even at that dollar store. Hallelujah. I don't know. You're watching online. God has positioned you for such a time as this. Amen. Thanks for joining uh, online. God bless you. Make sure if you're far away, join us online uh, for summer camp, EagleWorldwide.com, 7 p.m. And if you, you guys be here in person, it's going to be amazing. So thanks for, for joining us. If you would like prayer, please come forward. Uh, we do have a prayer team that's prepared to pray for you. So God bless you and have an awesome day. And we're so glad that you are here. Amen. Yeah.